Now we got David Bonson, who I don't think went to Yale, head of the Bonson Group, managing partner, author of There's No Free Lunch. Um, just come back to what Art's saying, because it is interesting. Um, it was almost 90, what did he say, 97 to 3, 1986 Senate vote, essentially a flat tax, two brackets. Yeah. We took 20,000 pages out of the Federal Register. Where is that kind of thinking today? Uh, well, it's gone. And, and so it's, an, it's marginal tax rate reduction. No one's talking about it. Deregulation, no one's talking about it. They want to re-regulate, over-regulate everything, especially energy. And what good is that? What good is that? It's, it's an environmental agenda that I think has become very extreme, and that's sort of, you know, the big thing I'm talking about right now. Talk about your piece, the bankruptcy of ESG, speaking of environmental agenda. Yeah. And I'll just read, let's see, the S&P the S&P ESG index is down 12% this year, but the S&P energy index is up about 35% this year. You would have been better off buying the energy index. Well, and the same was true last year, too. So you're referencing the piece I wrote in National Review. Mm -hmm. um, the ESG movement had five years of a free ride because it happened to be when energy was suffering in the stock market and technology was on fire, led by the FANG stocks. All of that reversed in 2021. And now all of a sudden the ESG zealots can't keep saying, oh, it doesn't impact performance. It absolutely impacts performance. This year by about a 50% net mm -hmm. difference, as you pointed out, last year was very similar. Energy was the top performing sector. What is ESG? You asked that in here. I thought it was the best part of your piece. What is ESG? Well, that's the critique. Social governance? What does that mean? And, and I, they say it's environmental social governance. And reality is governance, and they're putting all these tech stocks in there where they get 100 to 1 votes the CEO does like a Facebook where Zuckerberg gets to control the whole vote that's good governance um, but then right. an Exxon and a Chevron trying to create jobs and help America be energy independent is bad governance so it doesn't have any real moral fiber to it there's no real actual worldview or cohesive understanding and it's b certainly not based in American principles of freedom individual responsibility yeah, that's where I wanted to go there for a lot you know can we have some free market capitalism, some free enterprise capitalism? Can we get away from all this big government socialism? Can I go from woke back to growth and opportunity? Is such a thing possible? Well, it is, and it's going to take, unfortunately, a complete like moral awakening I mean, in the country because a lot of people bought into this because it made them feel good about themselves, right? They didn't have to make any sacrifice. They could just mm. yell at Exxon, and they felt good about themselves. Virtue signaling. Virtue signaling. Mm. Yep, yep. Give me 20 seconds on the market. market took today's jobs numbers pretty good. It did. Fed's yeah. going to have to raise rates again, but the market, I don't know. What's going on with the market? Well, I loved your thing with Art about Jason Furman's comment, because I can't stand this idea, and you were the one who really taught me how much the Phillips curve is dead. This idea that jobs are like inflationary is untrue. Yeah. You need growth, you need better wages, and ultimately more people in the job sector means more goods and services, which is anti-inflationary. This is not that hard to understand. I want jobs. That's, it's not political or partisan. It's we want growth in the economy. You know, it's funny, Jason Furman, who's a good guy, yeah. know him personally quite well. He and Summers were, uh, they had a role. They did predict the inflation from the government spending and so forth and so on. But now they both backed this silly bill. They backed the higher corporate tax rates in this silly bill, which would be inflationary and recessionary. And now you get a good um, growth number like this from jobs and they don't like it. I, I don't I mean, I'm having trouble. I, I like to have a coherent, consistent intellectual framework. OK, like I don't care under which president you get a 500,000 uh, 500, K jobs increase. I don't care. It's good for America. Absolutely. Um, they're being consistent Keynesians, unfortunately, and Keynesianism is a flawed economic way of viewing the world. The supply side's the way to go here. You want growth and productivity, and I would love it in any Democratic administration. Yeah. In fact, I know someone who wrote a book on how we got it with a Democratic president named Kennedy, yes. a Republican president named Reagan. Yes. It can happen, Larry. JFK and the Reagan Revolution, one click on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there used to be a whole section of the Democratic Party that believed in free enterprise. Yes. They might have been a little heavier 
on social spending, yeah. that group, but they were always strong, you know, anti-communist, pro-America, yeah. and they were not afraid of tax cuts, particularly tax cuts that would have helped blue collars, construction workers, men and women who work with their hands. That crowd is gone. Well, you know, their abandonment of the working class is why they lost the 2016 election. I mean, that's really what created the Trump phenomena was that the Republicans now are paying attention to the working class. Democrats are not. But you help the working class with lower taxes. You create jobs, create growth. And so I think that that type of Democrat you're talking about, they may be out there, but they're afraid to be real public and loud right now. The woke progressives are drowning. Guys like us should reach out to them. They can join our coalition. David Bonson, best of the best. Coming up.